There probably is. I mean, let's be clear, the US has some amazing companies uh, that have got amazing innovation, NVIDIA and so on being an example. But they have got to very, very elevated uh, levels of valuation. So the, certainly compared to the UK, which is a standout cheap market, you've probably got a 20% premium, uh, you know, like for like in the US. So evaluation does matter, uh, and, and maybe there's a, there's a reassessment of the value of the various international markets. It's interesting you highlight the UK trading at a discount because that has been the case for a number of years. And um, back when I was in equity research, we were told valuation is a factor, but it can't be your buy thesis. That's not why you buy into a stock or a market. There's got to be a catalyst to buy in. Do you see the UK market actually catching a bid and outperforming uh, in, in the next few months? I think the catalyst might be something to do with the, the reason that people invest in stocks. So. Um, for a long time, during the very, very long uh, period when interest rates went down and um, uh, there was low inflation, um, it was really the growth stock. So people got the idea that you invested in the stock market to capture the growth of Tesla or something of that nature. Um, but in actual fact, for a lot of people, why they should be investing in the stock market is to get sustainable dividends and to keep pace with inflation. And actually, if people had remembered that, the UK was a very good place to be in 2022. Obviously, we've got straight back onto the growth agenda this year, rather to my surprise, I have to admit. But if people reassess the reason why they're buying equities and think about income, the UK is quite an attractive market. I think some of the policy changes recently and the announcements by the Chancellor to try and encourage more UK investment may bear some fruit as well. Rates, rates, rates. That's what's coming through in your commentary today as well. The research you've sent to us about the impact of higher interest rates and the Bank of England has been talking about it as well. And the message that is clear from this central bank, but also from the Fed, is that the sledgehammer effect is coming. It hasn't been felt yet. There is something still ahead of us. But if you think about the other commentary we've had from central banks, that rates are going to stay higher for longer. So just as household consumers are battered by the sledgehammer, they're not going to get any band-aid, they're not going to get any relief. What does that mean as we look at the re-rating of stocks? Yeah, I, th I think that sort of message about interest rates being higher for longer is probably quite helpful because if you look at the structure of interest rates, very, very short rates have been pushed up, obviously, by the deliberate action of central banks to, to raise interest rates and try and slow down uh, demand. But the market's taking the view it's going to be very, over very quickly, inflation will be beaten, and then interest rates further out come down quite quickly. What that means is that people that have got no refinancing in the next two or three years are not panicking yet. Uh, because they think all of this is going to be over by the time they need to refinance their debt. And this cycle has been marked by the fact that people have got longer-term mortgages, longer-term corporate loans, and even governments extended the term of their debt. So the burden of the higher interest rates falling on a very small number of people who, unlucky for them, have to refinance at this time, that is going to be a major issue because, in my view, short-term interest rates are already too high and the bank should try to get an expectation of a still elevated interest rate environment, but lower than the front end, but extending for a longer period of time. So they're trying to do that through talking to the markets, which I think is probably the right way.